in one year from now, we should certainly be well into the commercial commercialization of Akita. Uh, I think we're very focused on very specific end markets and applications, uh, all which can drive significant revenue growth and profitability. Brainship Holdings is all about revolutionizing artificial intelligence. Its Akita event domain neutral processor is described as the next generation of AI, helping customers to create ultra low power chips and systems with the ability to incrementally learn on chip without the need to retrain in the cloud. Here to discuss recent success and future growth strategy from California is CEO, Luis Donato. Luis, welcome to TCN TV. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure to be here. Now, Lewis, Brainship has just released an announcement on the ASX about a collaboration. Can you talk us through the highlights and why this is significant for the company? Certainly. The collaboration is with a company called Virago, who's a subcontractor to NASA. Uh, NASA is very uh, interested and intent on bringing neuromorphic computing into space, aerospace and space flight. Uh, the Akita design is uniquely suited to solve a lot of problems in space flight. It's complete, doesn't need any external circuitry. It's ultra low power, which is completely necessary in space. And it provides that neuromorphic processing capability that NASA sees as the next generation of autonomous operation in space flight and aerospace. That's fantastic. And I'm sure it's going to be driving some gains for the company's share price. If we can look at that in more detail and future drivers, your share price has jumped uh, from around 10 cents a share in late July to a current level of, uh, of around 30 cents. Uh, how much of this price surge over the past month do you believe has been attributable to investors forming a view that your Akita device is ticking boxes during the current proof of concept stage? Oh, I think that's absolutely on point. Uh, you know, we've been designing and developing Akita for the better part of three or four years. Uh, we've hit certain proof points. I think the collaboration with Virago uh, makes a big statement. We've also announced that we collaborate with Ford Motor Company, uh, as well as a company in uh, France. The location that we work with is in Stuttgart for autonomous vehicles. I think the investor base uh, in Australia has been very loyal, somewhat patient. Uh, we, we, are, we are at a turning point uh, where we're ready to commercialize the product and we've seen great receptions from some marquee names. In early July, Brainship announced that it had completed the wafer production of the Akita device from a proof of concept perspective. This is really an important development um, justifiably well received by the market. But from an earnings perspective, uh, surely it's all about the successful testing of the Akita device and product applications. What's your strategy and next steps here? Well, it's somewhat twofold. Uh, certainly we need to complete the testing and validation of the integrated circuit. You're right uh, or correct that it came out uh, of uh, wafer fabrication, went through assembly and basic test operations. Uh, we're going through validation of all, all of the functional blocks, uh, working collaboratively with a number of customers who will continue that validation process. Uh, so we are, we are really at that point where the device can be tested in the hands of customers uh, very shortly. And I think that will uh, really inspire our loyal shareholder base to gain more and more confidence. Great to hear about that confidence. If we can uh, look at another partnership. Now, last month you announced um, a partnership with MagicEye. Uh, that's a group that's developing 3D sensors that reportedly change how machines see the world. What's the potential upside for Brainship in this partnership? It's very, very significant. MagicEye is a well-known quantity in Japan. Uh, and when it comes to things like video gaming, uh, what we call 3D point clouds, sometimes people would consider that exclusively limited to the LiDAR opportunity in autonomous vehicles, but that's certainly not the case. Uh, Magic Eye has uh, a wide variety of applications that they can apply their technology to. Uh, fortunately, it uses a standard CMOS image sensor, uh, kind of an off-the-shelf product you'll find in cell phones, cameras, uh, automobiles. Uh, so there's a wide variety of opportunities and we're working very closely with Magic Eye and in turn with their partners. Now, there were some material increases in Brainship's research and development and marketing expense lines in the last financial year. However, other expenses were reined in partially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Brainship also received uh, some COVID-19 related government assistance payments um, in the year. How do you expect expenses, growth and cash burn to trend 
uh, into fiscal year 2021? Well, when we look back at 2020, uh, we have to recognize that there was a capital expense, a one-time event uh, in order to produce the mask set for the Akita device. Uh, so our steady state uh, burn is about US dollars, about 2 million a quarter. Uh, I do expect that we'll see some incremental increase uh, in the early part of 2021. Uh, as we commercialize the IC, we'll need to put some people in the field uh, to visit customers. We hope the COVID-19 thing passes so we can get in front of customers face to face. So we will add to sales and marketing what we call solutions architects that will work with customers to help them design their systems, but it won't be a significant increase. Lewis, last month, uh, Brainship also unveiled a put option agreement with US-based investment group LDA Capital, which could provide up to 29 million US dollars in new funding over the next 12 months. Uh, there was also the potential for this deal to be extended by an additional 12 months as Brainship continues to develop its Akita device. How do you think this agreement uh, will lessen any going concern worries for at least the next 12 to 24 months for the company? I think it certainly will lessen, if not eliminate, the going concern or the matters of emphasis that's noted in uh, our Hackier report that was uh, recently published. Uh, the put option agreement is a very flexible and somewhat favorable to the company. We put the shares uh, to LDA when and, uh, when and if we choose to. Uh, we benefited from the uptick in the stock price in that the first put uh, may have been done at a significantly lower price, so the dilution will be mitigated by the fact that the stock price continues to increase. If we can take a closer look at Akita now, your um, Akita device is a neuromorphic processor that mimics a human brain network. Brainship has regularly stated it could be licensed to original equipment manufacturers, end users and system integrators. Could you give us an idea of some of the practical examples of the applications of this evolving artificial intelligence uh, technology, um, perhaps in the home, transportation, city and health segments? Yeah, that's, uh, you've hit on uh, many of the top target applications. I think it's important to recognize that our primary goal is to work at the far edge, uh, not data center, not cloud, but at the far edge or near edge. So in devices, surveillance cameras, there's no reason that you need to send back all of the video stream if you're looking for specific objects or classifiers. And to do that in analytics at the edge and only send back the metadata, uh, it loosens up uh, bandwidth on the bus, and uh, reduces cost overall. So you could think about surveillance cameras, you could think about cameras, pixel-based cameras, or event-based cameras and automobiles. Uh, medical diagnostics or other data, uh, we recognize repeating patterns. Um, uh, remember, the, the word Akita means spike in Greek. Uh, we process spikes or events. We don't process anything other than non-zero data. So as an example, zero times one, you know is going to be zero. One times zero, you know is going to be zero. Why bother processing? So we only process non-zero activations, and that allows us to get that ultra-low performance that you previously mentioned. Earlier this year, Brainship was given permission by the US Bureau of Industry and Security to sell its artificial intelligence into key growth markets like uh, Japan, South Korea, and, and China. How significant is this to the company's longer-term growth prospects? I think it's very important that the ER99 ER classification eliminates a great deal of administrative overhead. Without it, each and every deal, you'd have to apply for a specific license for that particular opportunity. Uh, we have our focus in Japan, South Korea, Europe, and the United States. Certainly, China is a big and growing market. Uh, but it also has some troublesome issues that uh, we would have to deal with. And the, the world is a big place. Uh, Japan really recognizes the value of this technology. You can see uh, with this opportunity through Virago and NASA, uh, as well as the Ford Motor Company and others here in the United States. Uh, we have a wide variety of applications that we can serve. Uh, and frankly, we don't need China right now, so we're focused on those other markets. Brainship has also announced uh, in July that Nobel Prize laureate in uh, physiology and medicine, Professor uh, Barry Marshall, had joined its scientific advisory board. Has Professor Marshall's addition to this board been driven by perhaps the potential health sector applications of Akita? 
Professor Marshall is, you know, a world-renowned uh, participant in the medical arena. Uh, as an example, uh, we're looking into applications for recognizing VOCs or volatile organic compounds. Whenever we exhale as a human being, what's in our body comes out. Uh, originally, the, the diagnosis or the application for uh, VOC detection was aimed at cancer research, uh, early detection of cancer. Uh, can also be applied for infectious diseases, COVID-19, H1N1, and others. So we're focused heavily uh, on the medical aspect to the medical implementation of Akita in those types of devices. And look, finally, Lewis, one year from now, how would you like BrainChip to be positioned? Well, one year from now, we should certainly be well into the commercial commercialization of Akita. Uh, I think we're very focused on very specific end markets and applications. Uh, all which can drive significant revenue growth and profitability. Uh, a year goes by very quickly. So, you know, fortunately, we work around the clock. We have the design center in Toulouse, France. We have the design center here in the United States. Uh, we're working closely with our partner, Socionext in Japan, who helped us develop the implementation of Akita as an IC, Magic Eye. So we work around the world, and I think uh, we can make a lot of ground up in, uh, in the next 12 months. Well, Lewis, thank you for taking us through uh, your latest success and future growth strategy today. I appreciate being with you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like us to ask them. Or if you're an investor, send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.